Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are going to get dressed in 1868. So we're starting today in a chemise, which is basically just a undergarment that is just your base layer next to your skin. I'm going to put on my drawers, which are split crotch in this time period, and that is for ease of using the bathroom facilities among other reasons. Um, I personally prefer to wear my drawers underneath my chemise, but there are other ways of doing it. You can tuck your chemise into your drawers, um, and then you can also just put on your chemise, then your corset, and then put your drawers on over that. It's easy personal preference. This is just the way I prefer to do it. Next step is putting on stockings. These are white cotton. And I'm going to put on some elastic garters. These have a little clasp at the top and that helps me connect them. Otherwise, they're just decorative elastic and I modeled them after some originals I've seen. I personally prefer to wear my garters below the knee. You may also wear them above. It's just I find that my garters stay up better when I do it below the knee. Next step is shoes. These are side lacers from Amazon Dry Goods. They are the maroon color. Shoes in this time period have a square toe and, um, and by the 1860s we're seeing the slight heel. After footwear we're going to put on the corset. This one is just my 1860s corset. I've made it years and years ago. It's a little small but it still mostly fits and it's very comfortable so I continue to wear it without fixing it. Now your corset should not close in the back. There should be a two to six inch gap back there. So it actually isn't too bad. It's a little bit smaller than I typically prefer, but it is well within the range of normal still. And you can see it's quite possible to lace yourself in a corset. I was even able to do it without a mirror this time, which is an improvement from when I started. Then I'm going to take the laces, put them in front. In the front there is a busk, and that's what helped me close it up the front. But I'm just going to tie a little knot in this little bow. And sometimes I stick the laces underneath my corset, but I'm not going to today. Next step is a petticoat. This is a very plain white cotton. Very simple. And next I'm going to put on my cage. This one is a red cage, which I've seen one or two originals this color. And it's made, and it's made, and it's made mostly of cotton twill tape and uh, spring steel bones. And over the crinoline, I want one petticoat just to kind of soften out the lines. And I'm going to have to do a little bit of moving things around because um, my petticoat likes to get caught in my hoop. And at this point, we are ready for the dress as soon as I get all of the uh, petticoat where it should be. Today I have chosen a black wool dress. This is actually my morning dress um, for, you know, when morning as in someone died. But it is not just a morning dress. It's a, it's a black wool. It's perfectly acceptable for everyday stuff. Black was a fashionable color. Yes, it could have been used for morning, but it was also a fashion color. And to turn it from a morning dress into a regular dress, all I had to do was take off the crepe collar and cuffs, put in regular white collar and cuffs, these happen to be hand embroidered after an 1855 pattern. And then it becomes a regular dress. It is not a morning dress, although I did get asked a couple times that day who I was mourning for. 
It is not in mourning, and I was not in mourning. This is just a regular fashionable black dress. <clears throat> it have this one hooks and eyes up the front, which is very simple to put on. And it is one of my favorite dresses to wear. It's very nice. Um, this one we actually made on the channel as a morning dress. So if you want to see it being made, it will be made as a morning dress. Um, although I do mention that, again, it's a regular dress. It's just morning once you add the crepe accessories, the collar and the cuffs. But it was actually an earlier 1860s dress that I remade over to a 68 dress, 67, 68 dress with the elliptical hoop. So there's quite a bit of piecing in the skirt, but it actually did end up working out. And now I get to do the same thing I did with the petticoat, which is to try to make sure that my underskirts are not being shown. Which is easier said than done, especially when you don't, which is easier said than done, especially when you don't have a mirror. At this point, the undersleeves do need to be buttoned. And the cuff, which is has a little bordered butterfly on it, can just be folded back. And I gotta do the other arm now. And now it's time to accessorize. We're gonna start with a silk belt. This one is purple. I thought it looked really good with the black. Really anything would have looked good with the black, but I just chose a thicker purple belt. Um, the belt buckle is a reproduction from Beth Miller Hall. It is a pomegranate style. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Next, we're going to work on some accessories. I have a pocket watch to be worn. And we're going to put in some little coral earrings that are um, also from Beth Miller Hall. My hair was a little bit of a mess today, now that I'm seeing it on camera. I had only done this hairstyle once before, and I did not have a good mirror in this tent. So um, I was trying my best. Now I'm going to put on a brooch. This one also is from Beth Miller Hall. It's a reproduction ivory one. And now I have a bonnet to put on. Yep, and now we're going to get ready to go outside. So I have a bonnet. Uh, this one is a Fanchon style, which is um, a very late to post American Civil War bonnet. You don't see them um, earlier than 65, I don't believe, um, or maybe 64, but I'm pretty sure they came in the 65. So they're little half bonnets. And at this point, I actually my fiance opened the tent and I realized that it was quite chilly outside. So I took off the bonnet to go ahead and put on a coat. This one is a crochet a jacket. It is from a Godie, it is from a Peterson magazine pattern. It is from 1864. And it's so lovely and, and thick and comfortable and it's very warm so I do um, enjoy the time periods I get to wear it. <clears throat> Crochet for women's outerwear um, really doesn't really come into play till the mid 1860s. So it was a treat to be able to find this um, crochet jacket. You do see it occasionally, but mostly crochet seems to be resigned to children's things and um, household furnishings um, before the 1860s. And you start seeing a, a prevalent you start seeing it pop up in the 1850s for women's stuff, and um, it just doesn't seem to be as popular as knitting until um, really the 1870s. And now that I have my jacket on, I could put the bonnet back on. And now that I have my jacket on, I could put my bonnet back on. And to go outside, I have a little parasol. This is an original from 1867. I have recovered it. Uh, the original uh, was striped like that, but it was black and white striped. I could not find a pinstripes in black and white, so I did brown. But the ruffles um, were shown just as they were on the original. The finial, which is the little top bone bit, is broken off on one side, so it should be T-shaped, a capital T-shaped. Um, other than that, it's a very faithful reproduction of the original cover. Thank you so much for joining me today as we got dressed in 1868. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.